Okay, so I think we could probably go ahead and get started. It is um, 8 p.m. here, so it is the start time of tonight's presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. Uh, so for those of you who have not had a chance to see any of my other webinars, uh, my name is Brett Hamilton. I am part of the customer success team here at LearnWorlds, and I'm going to be your host for tonight's presentation. I'm also joined by a member of our fantastic support team. Um, can, can anyone else hear me? Is anyone else having problems hearing me? I see someone in chat saying they can't hear. Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, so again, my name is Brett Hamilton, part of the customer su uh, success team here. I'm also joined by a member of our support team, Christina, who will be answering any questions you might have throughout the presentation. So, so please feel free to ask questions while I'm speaking. Just keep in mind that there are hundreds of you and there's really just one of Christina. So if you have, so please have patience when you um, you will actually receive an answer to your question. I promise. Okay. So for those of you who are new to Learn Worlds, um, what we actually do is provide a platform that is referred to as an e-learning business in a box. Okay, so we've helped thousands of customers worldwide use our platform to create, sell, and manage their e-learning content online. So this can really be anyone from an individual who wants to monetize their own their skill set to a large corporation who wants to train employees internally. And in this session, we're going to take a look at our pop-up builder. And we're going to view some examples of how you can use this fantastic feature to help engage your users or your potential users like never before. So before we begin, let's just take a quick look at tonight's agenda. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is explain why pop-ups are such a remarkable conversion tool when it comes to e-learning. And then we'll say, you know, take a look at the, some of the do's and the don'ts when you're creating professional pop-ups. We'll take a quick demo of the Learn Worlds pop-up uh, builder so you can actually see how it works and some of the features and the functionality that are available to you. And then we'll look at a couple of examples, right? So we'll look at five ideas for lead capturing pop-ups, increasing your conversion rate, welcoming new users to your school, and just saying to see you soon to any of your site visitors, right? And then lastly, we'll just take a look at some of the analytics that can actually be captured for each of the pop-ups that you create. Now, as a side note and a reminder, please use the Q&A function below to ask any pop-up related questions during the presentation. If you leave a question in the general chat, it might get overlooked because there are people using that chat to communicate with each other. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please leave them in Q&A and that way Christina can get to them a lot easier and faster, okay? So why are pop-ups remarkable for conversion when it comes to e-learning? I think we need to kind of understand what exactly a pop-up is. So a pop-up is a window or a dialogue that actually appears on top of the page content. It's also known as an overlay or a pop-over. And a pop-up can be classified by whether or not a user can interact with or view the rest of the page. So pop-ups that do not allow a user to interact with the rest of the background are referred to as modal, while pop-ups that simply dim the background are known as lightbox. And you can see that here in this diagram. So do pop-ups really help with conversion rates? So AppSumo actually analyzed 1.75 billion pop-ups and found that the top performers had a conversion rate of 9.3% while the average pop-up had a conversion rate of 3.1%. Just to put this into some perspective for you, if you had 10,000 visitors on your site monthly, that would equate to about 930 conversions for your top performing pop-ups and about 310 conversions for your average. Now, I think many of us would be pretty happy with getting about 310 new newsletter subscribers each month, okay? Now, some of you are probably saying those numbers are great, but Brett, can we really achieve the results like that in our school? So I gave this exact same presentation back in March when we launched the pop-up builder. And I just wanna share with you some of the results that we've gotten since that launch. So out of the top 20 Learn World pop-ups, there's achieved a conversion rate of 16%. So if you had you know, 10,000 users visiting your site and you achieved 16%, you have a ton of new subscriptions, 
or a ton of new users just from the pop-up alone. So yes, there were top performers and we, we, we did see a fair share of mid-level achievers and low conversion rates, but let's take a look at what some of those high achievers actually did. So a couple of winning techniques here, exit pop-up. So when a user goes to leave your site, you could have an exit pop-up or a 60 second wait before a pop-up appears. Lead magnets, so download, um, you know, download this PDF or join a webinar, right? Free preview of a course, right? Click here to preview our course for a, a month or preview our subscription for a month, right? Limited time offers on specific course pages. This would be something like, hey, you know, um, for the month of August or the remaining month of August, we're going to offer 30% off of this specific course, right? Limited time, off, I'm sorry, non-invasive newsletter subscription. So please sign up for our newsletter. Don't throw it in their face, but you know they did have these newsletter subscriptions that actually had a lot of conversions. And then compelling and clear to the point messaging, okay? And one more thing, testing. Okay, our top performers created a ton of pop-ups and not all of them worked. But what they did is they found what did work for them and they replicated it with every pop-up that they developed from that point on. So you have the option to test. We have analytics and then I will show you those when we get further into the presentation, but there are analytics that you can analyze to find out what's working for your school and what's not. Try different things, test different things out and see which ones have the most conversion rates for your users. So how can I be a top performer too, right? I wanna aim for at least that 10% conversion rate. The most common characteristic and the secret to their success is that they were sure to use their pop-ups without ruining user experience on their site. That's very powerful, right? You want to create pop-ups and with great power comes great responsibility. We are all familiar and most of us are familiar with the days of AOL where pop-ups were just a plague that got in your way. And every time you went to a page, you'd have 10 different pop-ups and they were annoying and you would eventually just shut the page because of the amount of pop-ups that were coming in. So there are do's and there are don'ts when it comes to developing your pop-ups. You don't want to actually destroy the user experience of your site. So let's take a look at some of those do's and don'ts when it comes to creating professional pop-ups. We don't want to create pop-ups that come up before the main page content even loads. If I'm a new user and I come to your site and then a pop-up just kind of explodes in my face or even before I even have a chance to take a look at what's there, it's gonna be you know off-putting to me. I'm gonna actually probably turn around and leave. So you want to wait to present the content in the pop-up until it's contextually relevant to the user. Okay, Don't create pop-ups that show up right after the user logs into your site. Again, similar to just visiting your home site, you're going to have users that are going to sign up to your platform. They're going to log in and they're going to go to your after login page. As soon as they get in there, you don't want to throw a pop-up you know, in their face. Give your users some time and space to complete their tasks after logging into their account. Don't use multiple pop-ups one after another. There's nothing more annoying than closing a pop-up and having another pop-up show up. So you wanna be able to communicate different messages and you should segment your audience using tags. If you haven't seen that, that's in your user management. Um, you can actually add tags to users and you can actually focus your pop-ups on specific tags that you've created. So you wanna tailor messaging. If you know that you're contacting one group with a certain message, you don't wanna, contact that same group with another message. You know, break up your pop-ups. Don't interrupt during critical tasks. Simply trigger a pop-up after the task has been completed. So maybe they signed up for a course and you can have a pop-up come up talking about the newsletter. Or maybe they have signed up for your newsletter and you can have a pop-up coming up with a promotion for a course that's coming soon, right? So let them complete a task, a critical task, before you throw a pop-up in their face. Don't interrupt access to content through modal overlay. So we talked a little bit about this at the beginning of the presentation, modal versus lightbox. So modal actually covers the entire background. 
This would be something if you were really trying to get a message in their face and you didn't want them to be able to do anything else. So this actually disables the ability to use the rest of the page. What you can actually do is leave that background or that modal overlay off. And then you'll allow them to actually access the rest of the page while you could have your messaging in the upper right hand corner or the lower left hand corner. But it gives them the ability to actually be able to use their website without having to, you know, click the, the pop up out of the way. Next, don't ask to sign up before any meaningful interactions, right? How is a user going to know if they want to receive your newsletter if they don't even know what your school is about? So if somebody comes to your site and you have a newsletter fire off in front of their face, like, hey, sign up for the newsletter, and they haven't even had a chance to look through your homepage, why would they sign up? So wait for them to scroll through the page, wait for them to move to the next page, give them some time before you put that pop up in their face, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is actually take you through a little bit of a demo of the pop-up builder within Learn World. So we'll see some of the functionality that there is there, some of the things that you can do with the pop-up builder. And let me go ahead and actually just flip my browser here. So I am in my school right now. This is a demo school that I've created. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can access the pop-up builder in Learn Worlds. So the first would be from the main admin menu here under the site builder. I can just jump over to the pop-up manager. Or if I'm in the editor itself, I can access that from here as well. So I can create a new pop-up or do a pop-up manager here. So the pop-up manager actually allows you to create new pop-ups and manage the ones that you already have created. So this could be things like editing the pop-up, deleting it, cloning it, and even checking out some of the analytics that are available, okay? See, there's some nice analytics and we will talk about this at the end of today's presentation. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new pop-up. So Learn Worlds, much like the rest of the Learn World site builder, we have created a number of templates for you. So there are a number of templates to get you started. Again, these are templates. So you can modify them, you can change them and make them say whatever you want. You can make them look however you want, but these are just nice ways for you to get started with any of these. So we have templates created for signing up for newsletters. We have promotional templates created for you, offers and coupons, exit intent. So if someone tries to leave the site, Notification and announcements, if you just want to make a quick notification to your users or a, an announcement to your users. Video pop-ups and even um, welcome users. So this is a nice area, like if a user first logs in, you can direct them to specific parts of your site based on the pop-up that you've created here. So it could actually be a menu that is available for your users as well. So we're gonna go ahead and just select one of these. It's a basic one. We'll go with an email collection here. And I'm gonna just click here. I'm going to give the pop-up a name. Okay, I'm going to give it a category if I'd like to, and I can make it draft or public, right? So anything in draft mode in Learn Worlds cannot be accessed by your users. Well, anything that is public can be, okay? So we'll go ahead and make a draft, and I'm going to go ahead and create that. So what I see right here is an example of what I've just created. Now, similar to the page builder, I can come in here, change the text, the alerting, um, the wording. Um, I can edit the form around. Um, I could even come in here and say, you know, add an additional image here. Maybe I want to drop uh, an animation in here, right? So I can do whatever I need to do um, to this particular pop-up to make it look and feel the way I want. Um, next, I'm going to take a look at the pop-up settings here. So there are a number of settings that you can actually uh, change here on this pop-up. The first would be the status, right? So I can move this to public if I'd like. I can also choose where this pop-up is going to appear for my users. So it could be in the upper left-hand corner. It could be in the center. I can move it down to the bottom right if I wanted to, but there are a number of options that I can choose here based on how I want to present this, okay? Um, I can choose whether or not I want to include that little X icon. Now, if they click out outside of it, it's going to close anyways, but I can choose whether or not I want to include that. I can choose the color of that as well. Uh, next, we have target audience. So here is where you're actually going to be doing the targeting for your marketing, right? So um, I could build a pop-up that is just for users who are logged out or users who are logged into my platform. 
I can also build it based on tags. So again, these are individual identifiers that can be added to your user for reporting and segmentation purposes. I can also use them to target a, with a specific users with pop-ups. So if I had inter internal employees that I wanted to target with a newsletter or a message, I could just click here, I can add that tag. And now this pop-up will specifically target users with that employee tag, okay? I can also choose if I want this to be shown on all devices or specific devices that I want. Like maybe I don't want this to show on the desktop or I don't want it to show on the mobile phone, um, but I can choose how that is going to display here. And next we're gonna start actually configuring where this is gonna show up. So I can have this pop-up show on my entire site. I could have it show in a specific page group or blog posts or on my courses page or my bundle page or even specific pages within my school. So again, I can choose a number of these. I could say I want it on the after login and my home page and my about page, right? So I can choose what pages this pop-up is going to actually display. On. I can also decide when I'm going to show this. So I know we had mentioned before like the do's and don'ts like don't automatically just throw a pop-up in someone's face when they log into your, you know, when they first log into your platform. Um, this will allow you to actually control when the pop-up is going to show. So I could say after the page is loaded on page scroll, if a user is inactive, right? If someone's just sitting there, you could have a pop-up come up and say, are you still there? Or on exit intent. So if I were going to leave the website, I could have a pop-up show. Um, let's just use an example as after the page has loaded. So again, we don't want to just throw it in their face. So what we're actually going to do is say, let's wait 30 seconds after the page is loaded. So we'll give them 30 seconds to do whatever they're doing. And then we can actually have that pop-up show. Now I can add additional triggers here if I wanted to um, on a page scroll, you know, maybe they show for 30 seconds and then they have to scroll 40% down the page that could set it off as well. So you can add a di couple different triggers here or when to show it. And you can set rules. Okay, so when is the goal met? Show after the goal is met. So maybe they've clicked, they've subscribed. I don't want this pop-up to show again, so I can turn this off. And I'll show you how you can actually show how this converts. Um, I can add additional rules here. So Maybe I want to add an expiration date to this so it doesn't run after a certain date or it only repeats, you know, every one day or every seven days, right? Um, I could also say it's going to automatically close after, you know, 30 seconds or I want it to only show one time. So this will only show once to the user and then that's that. It will never pop up again, right? I can also choose the background here. So this will allow me to change the background of this particular color. I can make it all the different colors I have in my school here. Obviously white's probably the better choice here at the moment. Um, oops. Scroll down here. I can also add an image back there if I wanted to. Uh, however, um, next we're taking a look at that modal versus light box, right? So I could say I wanna add a backdrop, which is what we see here, right? It's solid. Or I could say no backdrop which means that my users can actually interact with the background here. If they're clicking on buttons or scrolling through their page um, and that pop-up won't actually interfere with them. If this is turned on, it's now modal. So now they have to do something with the pop-up before they're able to do anything else on their page. Sometimes this is necessary. Most of the time, I don't think it is. You can have a pop-up appear and not interrupt your users from whatever they're doing, okay? Uh, you also have the ability to modify that backdrop color here, and you can modify the opacity of that. So if you wanted to make it slightly opaque, you can do that, and they can still see the background, but they have to interact with, again, this pop-up before they can move on while this is turned on. I can name some pop-up properties here, so I can give them a category if I want. I can change the name of the pop-up. Now let's take a look at actually how we tell if this has converted a user. So obviously we're looking at a pop-up that is looking to get a user to sign up to our newsletter. So how do we know when it's converted the user? When the user has subscribed to our newsletter. So um, in order to do that, I can go to this button here where they have to click to subscribe. 
and I can go to actions. Now you can see here specifically with pop-ups, when this is clicked, the goal is reached. Okay, so that means if a user clicks on that subscribe button, it's going to say this user has been converted and they have joined your newsletter. So the pop-up has been successful, okay? Um, or I could say on click, close the pop-up. Yep. So once they subscribe, the pop-up's going to go away. They don't have to go up here and actually X out. So there's some nice little activities that you can add to these buttons here. They're going to help you start to kind of track your analytics, right? Now I mentioned some analytics before. You can see that there's some nice analytics that you can collect here. How many views, unique views, how many times has the user actually clicked the button or the goal has been completed you know, average time it takes to fulfill, total conversions. So you'll get some really nice data on all of your pop-ups so you can start doing your testing, right? Okay. That is essentially the pop-up builder. It is not difficult to use. You can create some very powerful pop-ups and we'll take a look at some of the options that we actually have here um, in the following slides, okay? So let's go ahead and move on and look at some examples. So five ideas for lead capturing pop-ups. Let's take a look at some of these. The newsletter subscription. So similar to what we just looked at, right? Oops, my apologies. Similar to what we just looked at, right? Um, we're gonna create a pop-up for a newsletter subscription. So let's take a look at what something like that would look like. And you can see here, the goal of this particular pop-up is to get someone to sign up, right? We wanna capture and nurture a lead. So this is actually an exclusive content, right? Get exclusive content, sign up now with your email, right? Um, the widget we are actually using here is an email grabber. So there's a couple different widgets that you can add into here. And so this is simply just email. We have other ones that will ask for a user's name and their email, right? So you can actually collect a little bit more information if you want. Um, but here's a nice example of how you can use that widget. Um, it's going to appear in the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, we don't have any background here. So the user can actually read the content here without this, without this pop-up actually interfering. So they could see this down here. They could continue to read and say, you know what? I will sign up for the, uh, the newsletter. So I haven't interrupted with what they're actually doing. Um, we have it set for users who are logged out. So this would be a user that is not signed up to the platform. It would be something you know, somebody who's just visiting the site for the first time and might be try checking it out, seeing what courses are available. This could eventually, you know, pop up in terms of a trigger when they scroll down the page about 75%. And we'd have this located within our blog, right? Um, once the, you know, if we wanted to set a rule here, we could say that once they uh, click subscribe now, this will not show up again, okay? So again, you know, you're not going to inundate the users that have signed up. Um, with a pop-up. It's not going to hit them every time. Once that goal is met, it's going to go away so they can finish reading whatever they're reading. Next, we'll take a look at how you can invite somebody to a webinar. Webinars are really powerful and you can actually do a lot of live sessions on Learn Worlds, um, either webinar form or in Zoom meetings or WebEx meetings. Um, but if you want to invite users to it, yeah, you can send them emails and that's fine. And I think you should still send emails asking users to join webinars. However, when a user logs into the platform and you have something like this, it's going to grab their attention a lot more. So let's talk about some of the things we've set here. So goals. Our goal is to basically set up a cross-sell and upsell. So this is a user that has already signed into the platform. They've purchased a course. We want them to join this webinar. So we're gonna set up a message. Um, it's gonna say something like, need extra photography inspiration? Join us on April 15th. We're gonna have widgets here. So the widgets that are included here are actually just the basic button widget. Again, with this button here, we can actually collect to see if the goal has been met. They click on the join us button. They bring us to that webinar page and they sign in or they sign up. It appears in the center in this particular example. We do have a modal background here. As you can see, it's a little faded. Um, the trigger, this would show after about 30 seconds after the page is loaded on the entire site. 
Okay, so anywhere someone is logged in and they're using the site, this could potentially pop up. And we want this to stop appearing after the user has clicked and joined the webinar, okay? Course updates. So, web, you know, sometimes we have updates to our courses, whether it's a live course or just a regular course, and we want to provide our users information and we could email the users that not everyone gets their email. Maybe when they log in, you can have some type of message similar to this that would display to your users, something like, um, you know, a new guest yogi every week. So we could have a new yogi teaching yoga class and we want to alert our users that there's somebody new here and to sign up for this potential class. So what we've done is we're asked for a name, we asked for a last name, we asked for an email address, right? It's the email grabber that we had talked about earlier for widgets. Um, the message is you get updates on the guest course creators. So if they sign up here, every time we have a new guest creator, we're gonna let them know. So there's a nice little uh, benefit for them. They get to know in advance who's gonna be coming so they can sign up for courses easier. Uh, we have it appear at the bottom. Again, um, there's no modal here. so the user can still click on the courses and things that they were looking at previously without being interrupted. The trigger, we'd have the show after about five seconds. Um, and we'd have, you know, maybe on our home courses page, right? We have to set no backdrop. And of course, the rule that we want to set here is stop appearing after the goal is met. Contest. Contests are always fun. People love contests, right? I get to win something. All I have to do is give you my name and my email, and I have the potential that I can win a raffle, right? So let's take a look at that and how that would look as a pop-up. Win an individual live yoga session. Give us your first name, your last name, and your email. Sign up for a chance of winning an individual personalized session with our top trainers. This offer ends on April 30th, 2021. So this is actually a great way to collect leads on your site because anyone that's visiting your site might be interested in getting a free yoga session here. So um, win an individual live yoga session is the message. The widget, again, we use our email grabber here with the button so that we can track our goal. We have appearance in the center. We've added a modal background. So this is really going to grab whoever's viewing this page's attention. It's for our users who are logged out. The triggers after 10 seconds after the page loads on our course page so that users who are checking out the courses we offer will get this nice little message in their face. And we have it stop appearing after the goal is met, okay? So great way of grabbing leads because people are gonna even, they may not even be signed up for your school, but they get something like this and they might be interested in getting that free yoga session, right? So they're gonna give you your first name, they're gonna give you the last name and they're gonna give you an email. You now have a lead that you can follow up with with promotional content to see if you can convert that user into a paying user. Lead magnets, downloads, okay? So the goal of this is lead collection. We want to basically show a message here to get your copy of an ebook for creating online courses. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Get your free copy of online courses with the wow factor. Download your ebook here. Okay, so this is actually going to allow a user to download some type of PDF or ebook by clicking here. Of course, those ebooks usually have some type of promotional material in there, um, or they're just an example of what the rest of your course is about. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just use the, uh, the download button here. You could potentially use the um, email grabber as well, maybe collect a name and an email. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna click download here. Uh, we have it in the middle. It's got an, you can add an animation to that too. So you could have it wiggle around just to grab attention. Um, this is for our users who are logged out. They're not users who are already signed into our school and potentially already looking at our material. We have the show about 50% down the page. So once the user scrolls down the page in our blog, about 50%, this would pop up. No backdrop, right? So they have the ability to continue to, to look at the information on the page here. And then the rule would be stop showing after this goal has been met, okay? All right, so five ideas to increase your conversion rates. 
How can we increase the conversion rate of our pop-ups? Let's take a look at some examples here. So uh, the goal of this would be a new course pre-sale. So as you can see here, we have a new promo course launching. Um, we wanna get users to sign up today to get 50% off, okay? So what we could potentially do here is provide some information to our users about what kind of course is coming. We can have a nice little pre-launch offer here. So if you click this button, you get a 50% discount on the purchase of this course that is coming. So we would have it in coming soon mode, right? Um, we have an animation here. This is our rocket animation. So that would be moving and grabbing the user's attention. Um, the audience would be all users. So this could be anyone that signed in, anyone that signed out. We have a trigger after 10 seconds after that page is loaded all over the site, no backdrop, right? And stop appearing after the goal is met. So again, this is to all users and there, it doesn't matter where they are on the site, this would pop up. This is interesting to users who are not signed up already and to users who are signed up, okay? All right, so let's move on here. Next, let's take a look at a Black Friday flash sale. So we have a lot of holidays that happen throughout the year, and it's always good to have a nice seasonal pop-ups and seasonal promotions that can be alerted from a pop-up. So you can see in this particular example down at the bottom of the screen here, this is Black Friday. We now have a promotion that will run for two days, 43 minutes and 21 seconds. This is actually a widget, it's a counter. So you set a time for this widget to be here and then you can actually have that widget count down. So what we're actually doing here is saying there's a limited offer to get 50% off now for Black Friday, right? That timer is gonna be counting. So if this pops up to a user and they see the timer counting and they know they can get 50% off on UX courses, they're gonna make a move a lot quicker and they're gonna click that button and convert because they can see that there's a countdown on this offer. It's 50% off, that's a lot. So I would have this appear um, as a bar here down at the bottom, maybe when they click on the top bar, right? So if they click on a specific link, uh, it could trigger 10 seconds after that page loads, right? Or there would be no backdrop. So they still have the ability to kind of click on the rest of the page here. Um, and the rule was basically once this has been met, it would not show again. So again, this is a great way to get users to buy quick with a fantastic promotion that is limited, okay? Next, we have an exclusive discount for free users. Let's take a look at something like that. So this is meant for our users who are joining a free course, right? Um, so the upsell from free, uh, we're trying to get free users to actually purchase a course here. So we could offer a discount on a specific course and we could have this target a tagged user, right? So maybe we're tagging our free users with free. So now I can have this particular pop-up actually target those users when they log into the platform. So in this case, I'm gonna have it target users after 10 seconds um, on the free course page. So they're checking out our free courses and then they see this, okay? Uh, no backdrop, so I'm not interrupting what they're doing. They're able to continue, they're able to look at the rest of the page, but now they have this great offer here to actually enroll and there's a countdown clock. So it's again, it's limited. So if I wanna get 30% off, I can do it now. I'm already a user, I'm just going to your free courses. So it's time to convert them into a paying user. Getting a coupon. So in this case, we're looking at a, obviously our goal is to convert a user into uh, buying a bundle. And the message here is a discount on a specific course. So if you buy this specific bundle and you use this particular coupon code at checkout, you'll get a discount. So choose the bundle that you want by clicking this button. So this would actually take the user to the bundle page in your school, and then they can choose the bundle that they want and they can use this coupon to get that discount, okay? So this is going to appear in the middle of the page. It's got a modal background, so it does blank out any of the other users' ability to control the rest of the page. It's for users who are logged out. 
It triggers after about 10 seconds after the page loads all over the sites. So no matter where that user is when they're viewing your school, this message will pop up for them, um, letting them know that they can get a nice discount on any of the bundles that you offer. All right, refer a friend and get a discount. This is always a good one, right? Referrals are always good. They make the school go round. Let's take a look at that. So if you refer a friend, you get 30% off. Bring a friend in and get 30% off your subscription for three months. Find out more here. So you can actually create a nice referral program. Have a little button down here at the bottom of the pop-up just saying, you know, click here to find out about our referral program. If you bring us a new friend, we're going to give you 30% off of your next purchase. You can have this show up to your users who are already signed in, right? Because they're users that are already using your platform and you want them to bring other people to you. Um, we have a nice little animation here to grab their attention. It's down here in the lower left. So it's not actually interrupting what they're doing here. And we have it trigger 10 seconds maybe after the page is loaded all over the site. So um, this again, when they click the find out more button, the goal would be set. The rule is that once they click this, this won't show again, but it gives you a good way to actually get a referral program going and to let your users know that there is a referral program. Five ideas to welcome users to your school. So welcoming new users is probably one of the most important functions of any company. And I say that because that is my job here at Learn Worlds. It's important for new users to understand where they are in your school, how to use your school and what you would actually offer. If somebody just gets dropped off onto a platform or a software without any help. It's like dropping them in the middle of a forest and saying, okay, find your way. So you can actually use pop-ups to actually target those users and help them through their path in your school. So let's look at some of those pop-ups. The welcome message. I love the welcome message. And I think it's drastically important for any user that signs up to a platform. So in this example, we've actually created a pop-up that can be more of a menu than an actual pop-up here. So, hello, what are you up to? You know, check out our live classes. You know, click here for your payment options. You wanna learn more about our online community? Click here and ch chat with other students. So I've created a nice guiding path here for a user who just signed up. Um, let's see what I know we can offer here. So this would appear in the center of the screen. I would wanna blank out the rest of the page because I think this is important enough that I wanna grab the user's attention. They're brand new. I wanna make sure they understand where they're going, right? So this could load maybe about 10 seconds after they get into their courses page and start checking out where, you know, the courses that they're, they're, you're offering. Um, and of course, I'd want it to disappear once they figure out what they've what they want to do. So you could have it show, you know, a couple times, and then maybe two or three times to help them navigate the school, and then it can go away, right? Student orientation. I mean, online schools are very similar to physical schools, right? So, and when most of us went to university, you got there, and there was an orientation. Let's talk about what the school is about what we offer here, how to get around, right? Same thing with your online schools. This is actually one of my favorite ideas. This is a pop-up that is a video that actually welcomes and orients students to your school. So they're not searching around blindly and trying to figure out what your school is about. Once they sign up, this pop-up can be set to show once to new students right? For the first time after they log in immediately. Okay. This is one of the one times I would have something show immediately. Okay. Um, Trinity, I see a question in there and I'll, I'll address it really quick. Um, how long is the recommended time for a video pop-up? I would say a minute to two minutes. You don't want to go, you know, 15, 30 minutes, maybe just something really quick. This is where you can find this. This is how you can find this. Um, this is what our school is about. Uh, if you have, you know, further questions, send an email here, right? So it's, it's usually something brief. I mean, you can have a 10, 15 minute video if you want, but as a user, I would, or as a recommendation, I would say like two minutes, three minutes tops, okay? You can make it shorter if you wanted to. 
Uh, but essentially, I want this to show full page, right? This is full attention. So I'm going to block background here with a modal image. I'm going to have the video here. I'm going to have it trigger the first time they log in. And then once they click start learning now, that's going to go away and it's never going to come again. Okay. So these are for users who are signed in, obviously, because they're users who are new to your school. Live sessions are about to start. This is a good one if you have live sessions. You can see here that we have a pop-up here for live session that starts in 14 minutes and 58 seconds. So if you have a planned live session, you can have this pop-up show to all the users in your school that are signed in and let them know that there is a live session or a live webinar starting in 15 minutes and they can sign up or they can log in here. So this, again, if, I, if I'm selling a webinar and I want to let my users who are already in my material using my material um, know, this is the best way of doing it because they're logged into the platform and this is going to pop up and there's a timer and they're like, you know what, I really want to join the session. I better act quickly. I'm going to go ahead and sign up and purchase that particular webinar or sign up for that course. Okay, so this is a great way of actually just giving information to your students without actually saying, hey, buy this or buy that, right? This is a helpful webinar or a helpful pop-up. Cookies. Let's tell them about our cookie policy. Now, this is probably well known in the EU. If you're operating out of the EU, there's a little thing here called GDPR. GDPR requires you to talk about your cookie policy. It requires you to ask if it's okay to send marketing material. So let's take a look at that pop-up. Are you happy to accept cookies? We use cookies and other tracking technology to improve your browser experience on the website to show personalized content and analyze our website traffic. Okay, or tell me more, right? So if they click okay, you're, it's okay for you to start collecting cookies. If they say, tell me more, and they say, you know, they opt out, that's fine. But this will allow you to showcase your cookie content, your, you know, your cookie policy to your users. They can see that if they click here. It's a nice little example of how they can send, you can send your users a message that is helpful and not really promotional. Um, but you can see I have this actually pop up on their profile page where they can opt out anyways. Oops, I apologize. Um, so they can actually, it's a nice way of just alerting your users about a specific thing. Now triggers, you could have the show after five seconds on any page. Um, rules would be, you know, obviously once they click that button, the goal is met. Okay. Warnings. Warnings are always fun. Today's live session has terminated. The content in this session has expired and you can find the recording on this page in 24 hours. So if you had your users tagged here for this particular course and after the live session was over, you could send out a pop-up message just stating that the live session has been terminated or the live session has been rescheduled so that your users know before they actually log in and find out they just sit there for 10 minutes without the live session going on. So this is a really good way to just alert your users about something that is happening with one of your live sessions. Five ideas to say see you soon to your visitors. And this is the last of the examples here. And then we'll just show you some analytics and we can wrap up with some additional questioning at the end here. So what we have here is open day. Okay, so let's take a look at that. You're invited to our opening day. Discover the current and new courses, speak with our alumni and look forward to seeing you. Join us on April 20th. So clicking here, they can sign up on a contact sheet, letting them know you know, I'm interested in joining you and you can send them information. So again, the goal is to get them to click this email or click this button here and join your opening day or sign up for your opening day. We use some widgets here at the top with some nice animations. Um, this would be for our logged out users because they're not enrolled in the school. And we can have a trigger when they go to head, when they go to exit the course page. So if I were to come over here and say, I want to click here and go back, this pop-up would show up before they leave this course page just saying, hey, you know, it'd be nice if you could join us on our opening day, okay? Newsletter signups. Hey, before you leave, you know, you had a chance to check out the site, you wanna sign up for our newsletter? So before they go to leave here, 
you can have this newsletter pop up saying, hey, you know, if you want exclusive offers and, and, and information on our courses before you leave, you know, go ahead and sign up here and we'll send you that information, right? So they subscribe, goal has been reached. This would be again for users who have been logged out of the platform um, and they go to exit your course page. Obviously, I'm going to add a backdrop here. So they have to make a decision and X out. They can't really exit out of the X out of here without making a decision first. And then I can have it stop appearing after the goal has been met. Asking for feedback. Penny for your thoughts. We strive to improve our offer. Can you let us know what you think? I can spare two minutes to give you some feedback, right? So maybe you have a contact form that this links to so that people can tell you what they thought of your free course or what they thought of your course, right? Grab some feedback from your users, get some testimonials. I love testimonials. They are the, probably the best marketing you know, material you can put on a site because as a student looking to find a course, I'm going to join a course that has a lot of student reviews and testimonials. So fantastic way to collect testimonials here. Um, this would be for users who are logged in. Maybe they took a course, maybe they're tagged with that course information and they go to leave the site and you wanna ask them before they leave the site, hey, please give us some feedback. Fantastic way of using a pop-up here. Number one action example. Did you find what you were looking for? What a great question. I go to leave the site and you ask me, did I find what I was looking for? Maybe I want some additional information and I couldn't find it. So I'm gonna click this button. I'm gonna to go to an info page that you've created maybe even a contact form. But this is a very powerful question for a user who is about to leave your site. This would be a good pop-up for users who are logged out. Maybe they're checking out your courses page. They go to leave, <clears throat> ask them if they found what they're looking for. An offer you can't refuse. Hey, before you leave, how about a free membership of our subscription? You know, click here to grab that offer. Okay, maybe I'm interested in getting a free membership. I was going to leave because I didn't really want to pay. So you can see here they were about to pay and they decided they didn't want to. So I'm going to exit here. This would be on the course page. I'm going to go ahead and exit. And then before they exit, you could say, wait, before you leave, how about a free subscription to try it out? So again, a nice message catching a user that is about to leave and trying to rope them back in. Okay, so how do we read some of the analytics that we get on these pop-ups? Now, I, I showed you like how you can actually access the analytics of each pop-up that you've created here. Um, but we're gonna find information here like, um, you know, total views, the total number of times a pop-up has actually been shown to anyone. So this metric is not unique. It just means that it's been shown to, let's say a hundred users. Um, multiple appearances to the same user increases that metric. So if I were to log out and then come back the following day and look at that same pop-up, it's going to still increase. Um, total conversions, the total number of times a pop-up has met its targeted goal, right? So we saw that you can select on that button, goal has been met. So how many times has this pop-up actually converted a user by getting them to click on the goal? That's a really powerful one to watch your total conversions. Um, it's not unique per user, okay? Average time open. How many seconds the pop-ups remain open on average? So is it sitting on the screen, the user's considering or thinking about it, or are they just exiting it out as soon as it pops up? <clears throat> average time to fulfill. How many seconds it takes for someone to actually click on the targeted action? So maybe they have the pop-up open and then for two minutes and then they finally click on the action there. So you, you have an understanding of how long it's gonna take for that pop-up actually to convert a user. Conversion rate, the pop-up's conversion rate, total number of views versus the total number of conversions. Unique conversion rate is the pop-up's unique, uh, is, yeah, sorry, unique users that saw the pop-up versus unique users that performed the target auction. So there are a number of graph charts below here as well that you can actually check out that will show you, you know, nice little views and things like that graphically. So you can get an understanding of how these pop-ups are actually performing in your school. So before you guys, before we jump into the Q&A here, just a couple of things here, just to take away. Be relevant with your pop-ups. 
take the context into consideration, right? When do I show these pop-ups? Do I just throw them in this user's face before they've even looked at the page? Or do I show them a pop-up when they're leaving the course page that offers them 50% off a course before they leave, right? Exit pop-ups or 60 second wait, these are really powerful. We just saw an example of those at the end of the at the end of today's presentation. Um, 60 second wait, in general person will look at it on a page for about 60 seconds. So before they leave, you could have something pop up or you could have it pop up on exit intent. Lead magnets, download or visit a webinar, right? Give us your information or download this file here. You're just gonna give us your name and your, your, your email so that I can you know, send you some nice promotional material. Free previews of the course, they always work great. Hey, check out our subscription for a month for free. Limited time offers on specific course pages. Those countdown clocks are so powerful when it comes to promotions and limited offers because it makes users make a move before they actually, you know, before that counter clicks down. Counters are very powerful. Um, Non-invasive newsletter subscriptions. So again, no modal background, right? Maybe upper right-hand corner, sign up for our newsletter. It's not gonna interrupt what they're actually doing on the page. Compelling, clear to the point messaging. And that, that's important with any marketing material that we create, whether it's a pop-up or not. If you're gonna have some type of pop-up, make sure that it's compelling, clear, and to the point. Don't have a paragraph pop-up because the user is not gonna read it all and they're just gonna X that thing out. Um, be clear and concise with your messaging. And then lastly, test, test, test. The first time you create a pop-up, it may or may not be successful, but you should really continue to try out different types of pop-ups in ways that you're actually showing this stuff um, to see what works for your user base. Certain things will work for one school that won't work for another. So you need to test your pop-ups. Create one, run it for a week, see how it performs, create a new one, run it for a week, see how that performs, and continue to test until you find the right formula for your school. Then you're gonna be able to create really powerful pop-ups based off the information you collect off the analytics, right? So again, testing is extremely important. All right, so um, we have about eight minutes left. And if there are any questions that have not been addressed in the Q&A, um, I'll go ahead and answer those. If um, you have any additional questions that you didn't get to, and maybe Christina wasn't able to answer them in time, um, just leave those in the Q&A right now and I'll try to address that the best I can in a live setting. So I see one in here right now. What is the best amount of time to give between webinars? Should we schedule for one month in advance or just a few weeks, days, et cetera? Um, anonymous attendee. So it really depends. What I've seen in some schools, some people have weekly webinars, some people have monthly webinars. Um, if you have different subjects that you're talking about in these webinars and you have the material, right? Because material is important. You don't want to just have a webinar for the sake of having a webinar. You want to make sure you have prepared material that's going to be helpful to your users and advance them within your school. Um, so I would say, you know, Based on how much material you have, you could do it weekly or monthly. Um, I think a good month in advance is probably best, right? Because it's going to give you time to generate leads for that webinar. It's going to give you time to just continuously, you know, maybe send out messaging or pop-ups that talk about the webinar, um, even have a countdown clock if you wanted to, build some hype around it. What's it about? Um, so I would say at least a month in advance. Um, I think that's generally what we do here as well is I think we generally create these a month in advance. So um, I hope that answers your question. Any other questions um, in the Q&A? I see some messaging going on in the chat area, but I think it's just basic messaging. So um, I do see a question here though. How many pop-ups are recommended in a course? Uh, Trinity, don't go nuts with pop-ups, right? So have one pop-up at a time running. Again, you don't want to have, you know, five or six pop-ups for a particular course, unless it's like messaging, 
if it's like an alert or, you know, hey, uh, an update on the course itself, that's fine. But if it's a promotional or asking users to join the newsletter, you don't want them to close out the newsletter and then have something promotional pop up and then you close that out and have something else pop up as well. So I, I say create a pop up that's either a newsletter pop up that's going to run for a week and then disable it and let another pop up run for a little bit um, and just kind of rotate those. Right. So you're not drowning your users in pop ups. How do you automate a refer a friend and get 30 percent discount? Is that possible to automate? Um, that's a little harder to automate because you need to make sure that they're you're actually collecting um, information on the person they're referring. What I would actually do in that instance um, is when they click that button, bring them to a, like a referral page that you've created on the system there, and then actually have them um, email a particular user's information over to you. And then you can get them enrolled in the course and then you can share a coupon for 30% off, if that makes sense, Laurel. If, not sure if it's potentially possible to automate that. You may be able to do something similar with like Zapier and do some automation with Zapier, but I believe it's gonna be a little bit manual. And I see Christine is typing in there as well, so. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Samantha. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining. Thanks everyone for joining. I really hope you enjoyed the webinar. I hope it was good for you. We will be um, sending this recording. I think I saw this, Christina was mentioning it. We'll be sending the recording out on Monday. So if you've been registered, you'll receive the recording. Um, you'll be able to see all the examples we ran through, um, all the information that we have there. So um, you know, feel free to take a look at that. If you are part of our learning center or high volume and you have questions more about what's going on with pop-ups, you know, feel free to reach out to your CSM. We have a great team here. They're very informed on pop-ups and how you can use them in your school. So uh, please um, go ahead and reach out to your CSMs if you are a customer and you're under the LC or high volume license.